Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at something that I've had several requests for, and that is how to install Nginx Proxy Manager on a Raspberry Pi. Now look, I know that a lot of people have also asked for Netflix, or not Netflix, uh, Nextcloud uh, on a Raspberry Pi, but I wanna have the foundation of having Nginx Proxy Manager on there first, have it installed and set up and ready to go. So in my next video, uh, we can take a look at how to install Nextcloud on a Raspberry Pi as well. So uh, if you aren't subscribed to the channel and you wanna know how to do that, uh, definitely get subscribed. I've got that video coming out very, very soon. Um, so let's go ahead uh, in the meantime and take a look at how to install Nginx Proxy Manager on a Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. We are on, we are at nginxproxymanager.com, um, and and realistically, this mostly works uh, the way it's set up here. Uh, we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, a JSON file here for the configuration. Uh, this is where we're going to store all of our uh, usernames and passwords and things like that to connect to the database. Uh, below that, we've got a very very short uh, Docker compose file here, um, <clears throat> and. Everything in here works. Uh, all of this is good until we get down to this database image right now, or right here. And if you've if you've actually tried to install this on a Raspberry Pi, you'll know that it fails when it gets to the database portion of things. And that's because we can't use this database. Uh, we've actually got to use a different database. Uh, the one I found is from uh, uh, from Docker, hub.docker.com. It's a Yoba Systems uh, Alpine Maria database. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at installing that instead of this JC21 uh, Maria database. Um, so we're gonna switch that out. The other thing we need to make sure of is that we've got uh, ports 80, 81, and 443 available. Um, so that means if you've got Open Media Vault installed, uh, you're going to have to change the port on Open Media Vault. Here you can see I've changed my port to 90 uh, rather than having it on 80 here. Um, <clears throat> so just wanted to keep that in mind. Uh, also, because this is a version three stack or, or Docker compose file, we're not going to be able to use Portainer. We're gonna have to use uh, our SSH commands to go in, create some files, deploy everything through SSH. So that's kind of a little caveat to this in order to get it to work. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's open up. Oops, let's uh, actually, let's close a bunch of windows. All right. <clears throat> so. Now we're gonna connect. Uh, again, you can use putty or command or whatever you wanna use, as long as you can SSH into your Raspberry Pi server. So we're gonna type in our IP address and we'll click go. And of course it always pulls it into the wrong screen, but we'll go ahead and log in as Pi and we'll log in there. And then what we need to do is let's do a list screen. Um, this is a very fresh install of Open Media Vault. Uh, the script I used actually downloaded this file and installed all of the OMB extras uh, automatically, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a directory. Oops, directory, and we're gonna call this Nginx. Uh, the name of the directory is kind of irrelevant, but I like to name things appropriately. Uh, then we're going to uh, change directories into that directory. And then we're going to do a nano, and this is going to let us create a file called config.ja or json. Um, like so, and then what we'll do is we're just gonna grab this like so, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and just paste that in there. Now this is going to be uh, the the name, uh, the database name, the database user, and the database password. Uh, so this having this all be npm realistically is fairly insecure. You really should change uh, all of these um, to be something more appropriate, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to. Um, so we'll just do a control X and say yes and enter. Now, uh, if we scroll down here a little further, <clears throat> um, whatever you make those, uh, those variables, the name, uh, the database name, the, the username, the password, all of that, you want to make sure that you uh, change these appropriately as well. Once we get into these MySQL environmental variables. Um, so let's go ahead and grab this, uh, like so. And then we'll go ahead and we're gonna say, again, nano. And we're gonna say uh, docker compose.yml. And we're just, oops, whoa, holy cow. Then we're just, oh, darn it, I knew that was gonna happen. Copy, paste, all right. So now what we need to do is actually take that line out and then scroll down to here. So like I said, we can't use this JC21 uh, Maria database because it's not compatible with an ARM processor. Uh, so I've gone ahead and done some research and I found one again uh, through Yoba Systems here. 
um, that seems to work just fine. Oops, so we'll come up to here. Oops. Like so. And then we'll just go ahead and paste that in there. And that way we're gonna use this uh, Yobo Systems database instead. And then we don't really need to change anything else here. Uh, we've got ports 80, 81, and 443 configured here. Uh, 80 and 443 are for traffic. Uh, 81 is for the dashboard that we're gonna log into here in just a moment. Um, but that is uh, everything that we'll need to do here. So again, we can press Control X and say yes, and, and then let it be named docker compose.yml. And then we can say docker compose up minus D. All right, so this happens every once in a while and I'm not entirely sure. Yes, I am. Wait, am I? Let me see. Nope, that should all be correct. So if you have that happen, all right, so let's try that way. There we go. Uh, so apparently if you run that, if you run into that issue where it's saying something to the effect of it's in a non-standard location, uh, I'm not sure why it does that, but uh, if you run the command the docker compose up minus D uh, with a sudo in front of it, or sudo, however you want to pronounce that, uh, that seems to fix the issue. I don't know if that's a proper fix, probably not, um, but that's how uh, th this thing over here kind of reminded me to try that and it worked. So uh, if you get the non-standard location error, just run the command with sudo or sudo and uh, it should work just fine at that point. All right, <clears throat> so it's downloaded, extracted, and created everything we need to create here. Uh, so let's do uh, one, uh, let's go over here, like, oops, actually, let's just change that to there. Let's admin. Um, oops, because sometimes this takes a little while to launch, uh, especially after just being created. So we'll come into here, go to our containers, so let's go ahead and restart this. So it's gonna go through its process here, and it right here, this is the part that takes a really long time sometimes, especially on, on an ARM processor. It's not quite as bad as an, on an Intel processor or an AMD processor, like a full-size desktop processor. Um, but right now, because we're on an ARM processor, this takes a little bit of time. So we'll wanna give this just a moment here. So this is all looking good. We like to see all of this stuff running. All right, so then let's come over to here. Let's pop this open in a new window and put it on 481. And there we go. There we have Nginx Proxy Manager running on a Raspberry Pi. But of course we wanna log in. So we're gonna say uh, admin at uh, example.com and change me like so. And of course it wants me to change my name here. And there we go. Now we have Nginx Proxy Manager running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, I'm running it on an eight gig, but you can run it on a two gig or a four gig, whatever you wanna do there. Okay guys, there you go. Uh, there it is, there's how to install Nginx Proxy Manager on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, pretty simple, all you gotta do is just change one little spot to use a different database. Uh, unfortunately, the database that's in uh, or on the website just doesn't work with ARM processors. So uh, we used uh, the Yoba systems and it seems to work just fine. So uh, of course, we don't have anything to add to this yet as far as uh, applications that we're going to direct traffic to but like i mentioned at the beginning of the video if you come back wednesday we're going to install uh a next cloud on the same raspberry pi and we're going to actually direct a url to it so we can access it from anywhere so uh, if you want to get notified when that video comes out definitely get subscribed turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when that happens i will have uh links to all of this uh the all the stuff that i used uh, in a blog post uh linked in the description down below also while you're in the description uh, there are a couple of links down there that if you check out i'd be really appreciative uh, one of them is for a coffee. Uh, it's a coffee link. Uh, it's a one-time tip. If you find the video helpful, why don't you kick me a one-time tip? Uh, you can use that link to do that. Or if you want to become a patron over on Patreon, there are, I believe, three different levels at which you can subscribe. And two of those levels will give you access to a uh, patrons-only Discord server where we can hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. So I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.